Welcome to spring. Good morning. Welcome to all of you who come often, and welcome to all of you who come occasionally, and a special welcome to anyone who is joining us for the first time. We are God's people, enabled by the Holy Spirit, served by grace, and nourished by Holy Scripture. We gather at St. Giles in the gracious and loving presence of God, the maker and lover of creation. We are called here to worship and to work, and this is holy ground. We acknowledge that we meet on the traditional territory of the people of Treaty 7, as well as meeting on the homeland of the Medi Nation of Alberta Region 3, whose practices and spiritualities are tied to the land. Please take time to review the announcements in your bulletin. Of note are the Bible studies and work study beginning tomorrow night and the Walk for Housing. Also, we recently had a successful games night, and we look forward to having some more in the future. Today, we at St. Giles Presbyterian Church have invited a qualified candidate to preach for the call, Sandra Mannix. She was born and raised at Grace Presbyterian Church here in Calgary and has been our student minister for the last year. She is also the English minister at CKPC and leads the afternoon services there every Sunday. Today we are also led in worship by Esther, our esteemed choral director, and our beautiful choir and musicians, including Carmen and Jason today. Reverend Rod, our interim moderator, Julie Yoon and Anne Frost, our prayer warriors, Ian Mackay, our finance committee convener, and Janet Astle, one of our scripture readers. Thank you to everyone. After the service, Chandra will leave the church with her family, and everyone else is to asked to remain seated, including the hospitality crew who normally heads out to prepare food a little early. Everyone else is to stay in the sanctuary for the congregational meeting following, immediately following the service to vote for whether we keep Sandra, Chandra as our minister, and if the result is positive, agree upon the terms of the call. More instructions will follow in the meeting if we choose to sign all the documents. This is necessary for us to formally call a minister, so please stay seated at the end of the worship service. But for now, to begin our worship service, we light the Christ candle. It is a symbol of the presence of the triune God here with us for worship. Andrew will come forward and light the candle, so please join me in saying the words on the screen when it is lit. Oh, 
We will now say together or not together, you will listen to me as I read a statement of faith from Living Faith. The green book is in the pews if you would like to follow along with that reading. Uh, It's it's, uh, chapter 3, God in Christ, and I'll be reading uh, sections 0.1, 0.4, and 0.5 today. Jesus suffered, died, and was buried, but God raised him from the dead. Risen and ascended, he is alive now, the living Lord. We worship our ascended Lord, reigning in glory and power. He is our high priest and advocate, interceding before the Father on our behalf. Through him we offer our sacrifice of praise with prayer for all to the Father. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And if you would please rise, we will have a responsive call to worship followed by the hymn number 249. The words will be on the screen, but you can follow in the hymn book at 249. We gather with joy for Easter continues. Our doors have been opened. We celebrate the presence of the risen Christ among us. Doubts can be erased, and uncertainty turned to faith. Let us rejoice and be glad. We offer our prayers and praise with humble, hopeful hearts. Prayer of Adoration and Confession. Please join me in prayer. God of new life, we come to you, rejoicing in the mystery of the risen Christ, present among us always, even when we least expect him. We marvel at your constant love, your victory over death, and your resurrecting hope, which embraces us in every circumstance. Trusting in these gifts, we seek to live as Easter people in every time and place. Fill us with the gift of your Holy Spirit in this time of worship. And grant us your peace through Christ, the risen Saviour. Amen. Now please join me in reading the words of our communal confession in unison aloud, which will be on the screen. 
Merciful God, we confess our trust in you, can we can, and we become anxious about many things. We talk about love, but we fear those who differ from us. We cling to our personal agendas and neglect your call to serve us, especially when the service costs us something. Forgive us. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, we kindle our passion for you so we can witness to your love in all we do. Amen. Hear the, Lord, hear the words of the risen Christ. Peace be with you all. Receive the peace and the forgiveness of Christ and share that peace with one another this day and all days to come. Please join me in praise in singing the words that will be on the screen of our new hymn, Echoes of Rainbow, some of you know it. It was written by our clerk of session and our guitarist, Jason, here. Let us pray for understanding. Breathe your spirit upon us, O Lord, as we listen to the scriptures. Open our minds and hearts to receive your living word and fill us with renewed hope. Amen. 
The first scripture is from Psalm uh, 133. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing of life forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. This is the word of the Lord. And the final reading is from 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. That which was from the beginning, that which we have heard, that which we have seen with our eyes, that which we have gazed upon and our hands have handled, concerning the word of life, and the life was made manifest, and we have seen and bear witness and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was revealed to us. That which we have seen and have heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Good morning, everyone. Before preaching the message, I'd like to take a personal moment to thank you, to thank everyone at St. Giles who's taken the time to welcome me and my family and have gotten to know us over this last year. It would be impossible to name everyone who has assisted in the work and the service and who has helped me live into this call I felt to St. Giles a year ago. Many people assisted in creating new rhythms of worship with congregants participating in the services. Many assisted with Bible studies held under the trees in the beautiful yard membership classes, helping to grow committees, and growing new ministries throughout the year. The thanks extends to the people of CKPC who are walking in unity with St. Giles in their shared ministry vision, and who have allowed me to lead the worship, class, the worship service there, host a Bible study, and start an ESL class. I am deeply grateful for the warmth of both churches, from the staff, the current and the past ministers, both sessions and both congregations, members and adherents alike. It has been a period of profound engagement for me, for my family, and I pray for St. Giles and CKPC as well. I would also like to thank you for your patience with my learning. My learning as a student minister has brought many joys, and also mistakes. So I would like to ask your forgiveness, whether they were cultural, ministerial, or just simply human error. This is a safe place for growing, for stretching, for expanding, and learning the ways that the Holy Spirit is calling us into being as the people of St. Giles and CKPC together. We are being transformed personally and collectively 
process of transformation and the new life beyond our imaginings are only possible with and through God. Thank you for your forgiveness, your hospitality, your grace, and for including me and my family in your journey. So now let's take a moment and regather, pray, and hear the message. Dear Lord, thank you for breathing your spirit upon us, giving us eyes to see and ears to hear. Please bless the words on my lips that they are ever pleasing in your sight and that it is the message you wish to share with the people today. Amen. We celebrated Easter last week. We celebrated the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The cross is empty. We celebrated our inclusion as the people of God. We celebrated the truth of eternal life. And we celebrated that we are one family with God through Christ. This week after Easter is one of great joy as we participate with the disciples in the awe and the wonder and the miracle of the resurrection. Through Holy Scripture, we also participate with the emotional roller coaster of emotions that the disciples and the believers experienced in the event of that Passover week with Christ. To name a few, it includes confusion over the foot washing lesson, joy at the Passover supper, horror at the famous betrayal. It includes exhaustion during praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, disbelief at the message that Jesus lives, and wonder at the resurrection. It is an up and a down that tugs on all of our emotions. It is the exuberance and the trauma of life. In the passage from the Gospel of John, the story begins with a deep and real fear of the Jewish leaders who are actively seeking the disciples. The scared believers are afraid for their lives, and they hide in a locked room. They are lost without their Lord. They are vulnerable to the forces of the world that seek to pull them apart and destroy the community of faith and fellowship that has grown through Jesus. They are steeped in fear like a pot of tea with a tea bag left in it too long. It sometimes feels like that today. We are steeped in fear of the other. We are encouraged to isolate ourselves from community and simply focus on ourselves in this world because this world is temporarily in the control of spiritual forces that oppose God. We are encouraged to hold grudges. We are encouraged to only do the things that make us feel comfortable. We are taught separation and anxiety. We are taught selfishness, and it is destroying our children, our communities, and our elders. We observe those around us challenging our belief in God our hope in the resurrection, and our faith in eternal life. We find ourselves fearful to publicly profess our commitment to Jesus Christ. Our desire to attend and support churches filled with loving and faithful people can sometimes diminish until only a handful show up on Sunday and even less do the work from Monday to Saturday. In the story of the upper room, after the crucifixion, and without fanfare, Jesus just shows up. He quietly appears fully embodied in the locked room. He quietly appears to challenge darkness and proclaim his victory over sin and death. 
quietly appears to empty the teapot and refill it with living water that is palatable for consumption. In the upper room, we observe Christ emptying the fear from the bodies of the disciples as he infuses the believers with life. When Jesus arrives for the first time in that locked room filled with scared followers, he brings peace. He brings them the peace that they are forgiven of all their sins, and he anoints them with the Holy Spirit. He gives them the authority to forgive others as well. Anointing is such a biblical word. (laughs) We hear anointing of kings over nations. We hear anointing of prophets and of priests. We hear in Psalm 133, however, that the metaphor of dew on the mountains is an anointing. In that Psalm, anointing is equated to the gift in the desert on arid land that creates a lushness of life. One theologian helps us understand it this way. It refreshes the thirsty ground and quickens vegetation. In similar manner, fraternal concord, unity, falls gently on men's spirits and links distant ones together by a mysterious chain of transmitted good to help revive the failing strength, and refresh parched places. The Holy Spirit is the dew of our lives. Take a moment, if you can, if it's close, and look at your bulletin. Read the words that you said in the call to worship. If you're like me at all, you have no memory of what you've just said in a worship service. There is an essence and a being. You said, fear has turned to peace. Doubts can be erased, and uncertainty turned to faith. The anointing of the Spirit falls gently upon all of us. Like in the painting. Oh, the painting's not there again. The painting on the screen that has a hand pouring the Holy Spirit on all the disciples. It refreshes us with truth, and it joins us in this wireless connection to each other for the sake of goodness. When looking at the original disciples, it is very, very difficult to imagine that there was a lot of peace and unity between them before Jesus appears in the locked room. One disciple had betrayed Jesus that resulted in his death on a cross. Peter had denied Jesus, as had been predicted, and so he was probably thinking about that rooster. The women seemed to be the only ones, with the exception of John, who attend the crucifixion. It was a rabbi and a rich man that actually brought him down, not the disciples who laid laid him in a tomb. The day of rest, the Sabbath, the Passover, the reason that nobody was with him for that day after he was laid in the tomb was likely one of distress. When the women discover the next day that Jesus is alive and share the truthful message, the boys don't believe them. Beyond all of these circumstantial challenges to unity, We know from various stories that the disciples have spent much of the last three years disagreeing with each other, being confused, and not knowing what's going on. The stories in these gospels make me think that this ragtag group of boys, or young men if you prefer, struggled with love and unity and forgiveness. Which is why it's so fascinating that at this point in the story, the risen Lord, Jesus, puts forgiveness of each other and all other people in their hands. They are called to be forgiving despite their trauma 
and their fear, despite their betrayal and their confusion, despite the pain and the suffering. They are called to be forgiving no matter the circumstances. They are sent forth to forgive, and the forgiveness has a purpose. Jesus breathed the Spirit on them like the oil of Aaron running down his beard and his clothes. For Aaron, the brother of Moses in Exodus, it was part of his consecration to priestly service, which led to so many other good things, such as offerings of peace and fellowship and thanksgivings, good things like compassionate ministry to the people of God, good things like the atonement of sins. God intended Aaron and the Levitical priests and now the cowering disciples in the locked room to represent God's righteousness and salvation to a watching world. And each one of you in this room has been invited into that ministry. You are each tasked to represent God's righteousness and God's salvation to a watching world. We are promised life forevermore with the people of God, the ones in this room. And we are not only blessed with eternal life, but we are commanded to serve and forgive and enjoy unity and fellowship with these people right now. The blessing which God commands on those in love is life everlasting. That is the blessing of blessings. Those that live in love and peace shall have the God of love and peace with them now, and they shall be with God forever in a world of endless love and peace. On this day, remember our risen Lord. Remember the confession that you offered at the beginning of this worship service where we asked God to rekindle our passion so we can witness to Christ's love. Remember the statement on the front of your bulletin that you see every week that says we are nourished by Scripture. And remember the words in the hymn that we sang, Echoes of Rainbows, whose words were given to the clerk of session at this church by the Spirit when she wrote, the tangles and brambles that bar my way are sliced into shambles by God every day. Now I have the strength and I will move on. And his light guides me to the break of dawn. Beloved family of St. Giles, hear the words of scripture today from one of those disciples who was in the locked room with the resurrected Christ. Hear his message from the epistle of 1 John written decades after that mysterious and miraculous event. And remember today when Janet read that he has seen and bears witness and proclaims to you the eternal life so that you also may have fellowship with them. The eternal fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit. May this fellowship be yours for now and forevermore as you are sent by God to offer forgiveness and unity to all who have eyes to see and ears to hear. Amen. Ian, will you come forward? Thank you. In this season of Easter, we celebrate God's precious gift to us in Christ dying and rising. Acts 4 relays to us that early Christians practiced sharing freely what they had 
to grow the fellowship and to tend to the needs of community members. As we present our gifts to God, may our generosity reflect God's goodness to us and the hope we have found in Christ Jesus. Please place your offering and, if you so choose, the pink slips of paper in today's offering plate from our congregation. The pink pieces of paper allow you to write your intentions for the week, for sharing your time, your gifts, and your financial resources to grow the church and the kingdom of God on earth. While you're doing that, the choir will sing our anthem for the week, Heavenly Sunday. Generous God, thank you for the hope we can claim in your resurrecting power. Bless the gifts we bring so that they may spread hope in the world you love. In the name of your greatest gift, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for hymn 585. The words are in your hymnals and on the screen.
seated. Thank you, loving God, for your renewing presence in our lives and for the many ways you make yourself known to us in words spoken in peace, in actions that embody love, in creation that awakens wonder within us, and in worship that inspires faith and understanding. With memories of the grace you have shown us and with the confidence in you will yet show us more, we pray that all people will come to know the life-giving joy we find in Christ. We pray for those who are feeling fearful, worried, or overwhelmed. We pray for those who face violence and unrest each day in many countries around the world. We pray for our leaders as they seek solutions to the challenges in our common life. We pray for our congregation, the congregation of CKPC, for churches in our community, and for Christians around the world, especially those facing persecution and danger. We pray for our neighbors, and we pray for those who are ill, in pain, or in grief. We remember before you, silently or aloud, those on our hearts today. Bring them all comfort and the strength, revealing your risen presence, Lord Jesus. God, our maker, hear our prayers and use us in ways we may not yet even imagine to respond to those around us with the love we see in Jesus Christ. We hopeful, with hopeful hearts, we offer the prayer that he taught us. It's on the screen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, please join me in singing our final hymn, 467. Praise my soul, the God.
grow in faith, each one of you, with the peace of Christ within you, to bravely witness to hope, forgiveness, and the love of Jesus wherever you go. May you receive a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know God so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive the hope that he has called you to, the riches of God's kingdom and the immeasurable goodness of God. Amen. Before we continue, can I ask that everyone be seated, with the exception of my family members. Can I ask all of my family members <laughs> to come this way so that the congregation can proceed with their meeting? Thank you. On? Am I off? No. 